Good afternoon crafters and welcome to season two of Peter P Craft Presents brought to you by From Picture to Page and Beyond Paper Craft Shows. I'm Michelle Brown, your host who is so excited to be back and I'm creative director at From Picture to Page which of course is our scrapbooking, mixed media art and paper crafts community and what a fantastic community it's certainly been over the last few weeks. Now, Peter P. Craft presents our talented retailers as well as some guest artists to share a whole heap of demonstrations and to have a chat about what they've been up to. Now, for all of the details, head over to our website from picture to page and beyond.com.au where you can see all of season one, see who's coming up for season two, and then of course watch all the replays and then find all the links that we're talking about during our sessions. And while you're there, make sure you pop on our email list so you can get a summary at the end of the week, as well as all the up-to-date information about what's going on. Now, whether you're watching here live or a replay through Facebook or YouTube, we would love to hear from you. So make sure you pop any questions in the comments, say hi. We've already got a fantastic list of comments going and we're seeing where people are from, which is always exciting as well. And it really is fun to connect through our community this way. So today, Peter P. Craft presents Neve. Hello, Neve. Hello, how are you? We're good. It's so good to have you here again today. Yes, thank you very much. I've had so much fun last time, so I was really excited about coming back again. Excellent, excellent. And so what have you been up to since we saw you last? Um, <laughs> that a few years ago? Yeah, I know, a few weeks ago anyway. <laughs> yes, um, each week seems like a year, so um, I'm, I don't know what I've been up to. Back to school, mm -hmm. um, back, back to post teaching, so that's been, that's been interesting. But yeah. um, no, it's been really good. It's been lovely seeing all the kids again and still creating art and still chasing around after toddlers. So fun, fun, fun. Yeah. And have you been doing any crafting with your girls? Uh, yeah, well, yes. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're into watercolour painting at the moment. So um, they you know, get the watercolour paints out and a painting flowers. And Eve just worked out if she's just a paint, paint brush down and turns it down to make beautiful dots. So she's very proud of her new painting technique. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excellent, excellent. And I hear that you've got a class coming up that you can tell us more about. Yes, um, I've got my first ever live class happening in two weeks' time on the 27th of June. And mm -hmm. um, that's through Bev Costa. Um, so on my Facebook page, there's more information. I can um, give that out to people if they're interested. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing um, a painted journal cover, which you could translate to a journal page or anything else, um, mm -hmm. if I'm happy to do um, a journal cover. And I've also got another one in the wings which is creating 3D news dolls. So maybe at the end of the lesson, if you've got some time, I should give you a bit of a sneak peek at what the class samples look like. Oh, that would be right great. To me. <laughs> Nothing like a sneak peek. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So what have you got to show us today? Um, today we're going to be playing my Use It Up journal which is um, something I really enjoy working in. And um, I'm going to be showing you um, my techniques for calming the chaos. So mm -hmm. if you watch me last time, you see I like to create a lot of chaos and sometimes you need to calm it down. So <laughs> that's, that's what we're going to be looking at today. Yep, how to calm down the chaos. I like the sound of that. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy sometimes in art journaling to have fun but get a bit carried away. And when you go to put a focal point on, you're suddenly like, ooh, maybe I should have left a bit more space. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, I get into that habit a lot. So um, I've got quite good at problem solving that one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> excellent. Okay, well, we'll let you get set up and then we'll jump right in. Okay, well, while Neve's getting set up, it's so fantastic to have everyone here. We've got a whole heap of people. We've got from Canberra and Bendigo from Sydney. We've got Geelong covered. We've got Tassie covered, I saw before, and we've got people from all over. So it really is a good way of tapping into Neve's thinking process. And I love the idea of calming down the chaos because as we know, it's so easy just to get so carried away and then have trouble pulling it back when we need to get that focal piece. So it looks like Neve's ready. So I will hand over to Neve. Take it away. Excellent. So I'm in frame. Is that all good? Yep, that looks great. Awesome. <laughs> um, so first of all, what is a use it up journal? Um, so this is a new one I've got. And basically, if I've got any paint left over on my um, glass mat board, um, 
I tuck it in here. So it doesn't matter what colours I've got. It all gets mixed up together. And it just gives me a background that I can work with. And sometimes I completely cover over the entire thing and sometimes I don't and I actually use it as is. So, for example, this one, I just actually really like how those colours blend together. So I just left them as is and just put some of Michelle Logan's beautiful houses over the top. It's really, really simple. Um, the reason I love a used up journal is because um, if I don't have time, I've already got a pre-made background or a partly pre-made background. The other thing is a lot of people are really, really scared of the blank page. So it doesn't matter if it's really messy, really scrappy that it's stuck together because if you don't like it in the end, you haven't ruined anything because it was, wasn't planned to begin with, if that makes sense. So um, it's just really, really freeing um, to use. So this is the completed use it up journal. Um, so you can see just by adding a few focal points over the, the top, you can create, like that page took me um, 10 minutes to make, so I just stuck something over the top and a bit of a chipboard. That was, you know, really simple. I also swatched in there occasionally. That, uh, actually, I think that's the first and only time I've ever swatched. <laughs> so um, you can see they get quite messy, but they're great places to start. Um, particularly this page like this, you can kind of tie them together as you can separate pages. So that's what we're doing today. Um, da -da 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 -da. I haven't got to grip to this journal yet because a long thin one, which I'm not used to. I quite, I quite like the, um, the other side, so this is a challenge for me today too. So when I get to a page like this, um, because it's me, I like to add more stuff to it. Um, and that might be more colour, more paint, more stamping. So what I'm going to do to this page is, I've got some of the same colours on here, but I don't have any pink on this page, so I'm going to get some pink in. And you can see I'm, you know, really careful with what I do. So I'm just using acrylic paint. I quite like that it had some blue in it, so I'm going to add a little bit of blue through. Now, if you didn't have one of these pages, you could obviously start your own. Um, just by finger painting paint on and using your um, brush. However, however you want to do it. Um, and you might love what you've added or like me just now, I actually really hate what I've just added, but that's okay, because we're going to do stuff to it, so that's good. That's not too loud with the heat gun, is it? No, that's fine. I'm just, just going in and um, drying it so I can add some more layers. Obviously, if I'm doing this, quite often when I'm doing another art journal page, I'll do something, I'll leave this to the side and dry and then come back and do it again. I also find when I'm art journaling, if I'm getting really frustrated with a page I'm working on, I'll go back and work on one of these because I find it less stress to work on one of these. So it's just a new way to do it. Um, I think that's the first one for back then. So you can apply your paint in any way, so the form, as you all know. And obviously, as you probably realised, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing with this page. I'm just adding colour at this stage. And sometimes it's okay not to know where it's heading. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the exciting thing about art journaling is um, particularly, well, it depends what you're doing it for. Some people do it because they want to create a piece of art. But for me, a lot of the time, it's just my relaxation. So I find it really relaxing, putting paint down and making marks on the page. So... Um, I'm quite happy not to have an end goal in mind and that's usually why it's 
become so chaotic because I'm having so much fun adding stuff that I actually forget to stop. <laughs> Knowing when to stop is a good good thing. Okay, so I'm going to do some. Mic I've got a lot of colour on here already because I've got the um, page in the background. So I'm going to sort of move to some mic making, and you can do that in any way. You can actually just use paint straight out of the bottle. And Neve, Anya's asking, um, what sort of paints are you using? I'm using the Dina Waxy paints, um, which are um, heavy-bodied acrylic. Um, any acrylic will work. I tend to work in acrylic just because um, they dry permanent. And if you make a mistake while they're still wet, you can um, rub them off and fix it up. So I, I enjoy that. And when they're permanent, you can layer them over. So... Um, for example, that pink was um, still a little bit damp when I put um, the blue over the top. But it soaked into the page enough that I was able to lay the, the blue over it and it wasn't going to mix. If that was still very wet and I put the blue over, it would mix together and make a new colour. Which can look interesting sometimes, but I like the fact that I can layer up my colours. Uh, let's see, I've got some white here, so I'm just going to go in and white marks. So uh, you were asking about um, doing art with the kids at the moment. This is one of the things I do a lot when I'm playing with the, uh, doing art with my kids is while they're painting and having fun, I'll be playing around with making marks with paint brushes. So um, just, you know, different colours and playing around. And it's really, really relaxing and it's really freeing. And I've actually found that Kids' brushes make a lot more school marks than adult brushes. I don't know why. Probably because they're cheaper and the brushes do something different. So, um, if you've got time and opportunity, just to sit down with a piece of paper and play with your brushes because each brush will make a different mark. You'll notice when going, I am doing everything kind of in three. Um, I just find personally that that gives you the visual triangles and a lot of artists do that. They um, create visual triangles by putting lots of three on paper. I didn't actually do that with yellow, so I have to go back and fix that up. Most times my rules work. Occasionally I get, again, get carried away and forget. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. For those of you looking at the yellow going, that looks a little bit lumpy. Um, I had a lot of these, these used to come in the two ounce tubes and I had a lot of those so I actually popped up my, when I emptied my little bottles I popped them up the tubes so the paint's a little bit older and a little bit thicker so that's why it's holding in a little bit of a different way so um, when you buy your paint they won't look like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again just going in and drying off. So already that's starting to me look pretty interesting and it hasn't taken us very long to do and it's using something that was looking pretty ordinary to begin with. Um, but just by adding a few marks and a few other extra colours to sort of even up the pages and tie them together um, gives you something to look at. Okay, while I'm waiting for those, because those are um, raised lumps of paint, they are going to take a little bit to dry. So. I'm deliberately going to make this look really, really chaotic. Um, I actually really like that as it is, and I probably would just keep it like that, but um, why not add more stuff? Let's add more so stuff. These, <laughs> <laughs> these are the um, paper artsy stamps. Um, these ones are by Tracy Scott, one of the new ones. It's a mic making set. I love mic making sets. I find them so handy. Um, I love making marks myself, but from teaching classes, I know some people are really, really unsure about it. A lot of people don't naturally doodle. Um, so these are a really good feat because you get those sort of like hand-drawn marks really, really simply and you don't have to do anything to it. Um, if I'm drawing them myself, and I'll probably go back in and do some myself anyway, I use custard paint pens. So again, they're in a good at painting at pen form and they um, go over the top of 
acrylic paint, obviously, and everything else really, really easily. To stamp out, I'm using the Ranger Archival Ink in the different colours. Um, I'm using that because it's waterproof um, and it's oil-based, so it dries really quickly. But it actually does something really odd in the technique that I'm going to show you. So, um, which I, I particularly like. It may really bug some people, but I like the effect it has. Yes. And I like the, the fact that the archival ink come in these colours now. So there's the Kim Holt Stress range of inks. I think we've got um, 12 colours. We've got three sets in the archival ink. And then there's some from the Letterette range as well. So um, you can get quite a range of colours. And because I like bright colours, um, I like the fact that I can kind of match the turquoises and stuff to the inks that I'm using as well. And again, that gives that layered effect that you're looking for. One thing that's always good in journal pages, you see I've already started to add in some white and also adding some black to your page. So you can um, be really dramatic with the amount of black you add, or you can be really, really subtle. So I'm, I'm going to subtle first, which is very unme. I just putting some of these dots on the page. I'm probably going to do something more dramatic in a minute, but you know, let's see. Let's see how we go. So any of this stuff that I'm doing, obviously, you could just do with pens and um, permanent markers or permanent pens that you've got in your stack. So um, if you don't have mic making stamps, that's fine. You don't really need them. It's just another way to go. Uh, a little bit more black on here. Can you see why my mum always used to say you to add this to the synchronized strip? <laughs> I also notice I'm not using blocks to stamp with, um, partly because I never use blocks to stamp with, or very rarely, um, just because I'm happy stamping and not getting a, a perfect impression. But particularly for sort of mic making things, you don't want to have, um, this one's not a great example, but you don't want to have a really um, tight edge, just, just for example. So quite often, unless I'm actually stamping on the edge of the, um, I don't want to have that hide edge, so I'll actually just hold it up and bend it to however I want it to get a softer sort of corn edge to it. Um, and that's really hard to do if it's on a block. Right. I'm actually going to sit here because I think the page is right. I'm just going to do this. Maybe I'll scream at this. That fixed it. <laughs> right. Now, I don't actually like that big lot of yellow, but we can fix it. We can fix everything. So because the paint I've used underneath is permanent and it's dry, what I can do is put a stencil over the top and just rub it away and I end up with full compression. So... Everything's fixable, and I actually really love that now. <laughs> okay. So, you've got your page that you think, oh, what am I going to do now? That looks a little bit busy. So this is where we're going to um, do something which is called either the redactive or the reduction technique. Um, those people who um, watch Dina Waitley, she does this an awful lot in her um, artwork as well. And it's a great way to make a focal point of your page. So I'll show you some examples to kind of get what I'm talking about. Just got a few for you. So. You can see the background on this page. It was very, very busy. But what I did was I stamped out the stamp, 
And then I painted this white around it. So I masked the stamp, painted this white around it, and then re-stamped over the top. So what that's done is reduce that busy background, but I've still got the beautiful background in my birds. So it gives me something interesting to focus on. If I hadn't done that, those birds would have got completely lost on this page. The same with this page. Um, I had a really busy background. Um, I've stamped out some flowers. I've masked around them. On this page, I used black, and on this page, I used white. And um, got my photo images. And then I decided I wanted to add a bit more ex extra to what I actually embossed with gold over the top. On this page, Um, you can see in the background again, I've done a similar technique to, to here. Um, but it's too much for both pages to be like that. So I wanted to reduce this page. So I just cut out a figure from a magazine, set uh, that so sponged around it. And on this page, I chose to use a colour that was similar to the colours I had on my page, so it blended together. So I actually used the dark blue on this tonight, so I'm seeing a white place and blended it off so it sort of flowed together. So then you can see I've got the same background on both types, but I've got that blend and it puts the focus image on this page. So it's a really, really simple way to just reduce what you're seeing and to make a focal image. So, how do we do it? Oh, sorry, got my light. Um, you can buy, I showed you how I use the magazine. You can also buy masks. So these are from the Dina Wakefield Stencil um, that you can use for your images as well. So there's lots of stencils that come with masks. I know Start to Endure, Cell Effect. So it comes with the heart sensor and the mask as well. So you could use that. Um, lots of stencils come with that. But they're really simple to cut out yourself. So just put some basic copy paper, cut out a shape and put it, pop it on your page. Uh, the other thing that you can use, as I talked about before, is you could stamp something out onto your page and then stamp it out on a piece of copy paper, so that's what I've used those flowers before, and use those as masks. So I put those down and sponge around it. So you can use anything that you've got, basically. I was actually going to use those flowers, but um, for those people who follow me know that I really love those branches, so I'm not going to use those. But why not? Why not use something that you love? You'll actually notice I've got two of this set too, because I'm incredibly greedy. And um, following along from Dina Wakeley, she actually said that once, once her stencils get sold out, that's it, they don't get remade again. And I just, I've already lost one of her stencils and I couldn't replace it and I couldn't bear to lose this one, so I actually found another set in board, so I've got two now. <laughs> okay, so the, the hardest part for this process is to decide what colours you want to use to block out the background. Obviously, if you don't want to see the background at all, um, I've used a black gesso. So black gesso is incredibly thick, it's incredibly opaque, and um, you cannot see the background on it. If you use white, you can actually see some of the background um, popping its way through. The other thing is, which is a really cool thing with the archival ink, you can actually see the ink really clearly through this. And because the archival ink is oil-based, some of the oils actually rise through that paint layer so it actually comes up to the surface so you see those paints by those inks coming through. If that really bothers you, you can obviously put a few more coats of paint over the top. I actually really like it because it kind of connects the two parts of the page right, but still reduces the background somewhat. So um, it's another technique you can use. One of my favourite colours, however, I actually might use it in this page, is Payne's Grey. So Payne's Grey is a dark grey colour. It's more translucent than black. So it gives you the darkness that black would give you, but you can still sometimes see through the paint if you put it on lightly enough. Um, and again, it just gives you a beautiful effect. So that's what I'm going for.
So you can see next to the black, it almost looks black. But when I put it on, you'll see the difference. I've got a little bit of white in my sponge anyway. So, um, the sponging on, you can see I just tapped off the excess. You really don't want that much paint on your sponge as you're doing it. It's just enough to block out the background. I don't know if you can see on screen or not. Um, but certainly up close, even though that's blocked that out, I can still see that there's pattern happening underneath here. Here's your stencils, a mask tag, and you quite name So, we're doing this with paint. But the other thing that you could use um, with this technique is um, the Dina Wakely New Gloss Spray. So they are um, acrylic based gloss spray um, and they would work really well over this as well. Okay, so now I've, set, I've put the black over this. Um, sorry, the paint spray, get it right, please. Just going to dry it off. And one of the things I always do is move my white pen. <laughs> um, is outline the outside by mark so they stand out again. So particularly this um, mask, I love using really, really loose lines with it. Um, I don't necessarily go around the whole thing correctly. And actually the scribbly you are with it, the better. And you can see just by putting the white around the outside, it suddenly frames that again and makes the inside of those leaves the focal point. I know Diane designed these um, journals with those envelopes to be used for something else, but I've only ever used this time my pen. It's really mm -hmm. handy having that little bit sticking out the edge. That white scribbly line makes such a difference to the overall appeal of it. It does, isn't it? And again, this is all sort of learning because, you know, you get to that bit when you put the black on and go, oh, no, I've ruined it because it's, everything's sort of disappeared. But it really hasn't. Um, and you can add more to it after that. So, um, yeah. Tina says it needs to pop. <laughs> so one of the things that visually ties things together um, is flatter is really, really handy. It also goes everywhere. It should be worn. Put some paper up to protect myself. Oh. Okay. Um, there's two ways, well, there's lots of ways to do splatter. I like using a fan brush. Unfortunately, this is um, a new fan brush, and I, I think it's because I've used my last fan brush, it actually works really well. This one's still a little bit soft, it's not as crunchy as my last one. The other thing you can use is obviously if you've got the um, gloss sprays, you can just flick them off the um, the stem inside you can get some random dots as well. If you don't have ink or um, gloss spray like this, you can certainly water down your acrylic sort of paint and do the same. So it's just up to however you want to do it. 
Again, if you wanted to, you could put the mask over here so you're not um, flattering over your bit that you've marked out. Again, it's my use up journal and it's me. It doesn't bother me. So, I know it might bother some people. Um, for black, I do tend to like to use drawing ink. Um, again, it dries permanent um, and you just get that really black. And you can see it goes everywhere. <laughs> it's just sort of a really fine spreader. I pour paint pens and everything I own sits in front of me and they've all got black over them. So if anything goes missing, I know what belongs to me. <laughs> Just as well, we're all standing well back. Yeah, yeah. Some people get really scared when they say, and it's time to slap in class because they go, ah! Um, those people who have been doing it for a while with me know that it's okay. Everything just gets covered and it's fine. You can always save it. And how do you find um, the Dina spray? Does that take a while to dry? Um, no, they're pretty good. They dry fairly quickly. So um, it just depends on how thick you put them on. But I know she's not a fan of using heat guns. Um, I don't have time to put down the way. And her, her reasoning is, which should really be my reasoning, because she's got a ridiculous amount of journals. So she does something in one and puts it to one side and goes on to the next journal. Um, I've got a really good amount of journals too, but um, just the way that I work, I like to finish the page in one city, so um, I like to make sure it's dry. But I do find people have asked me when I'm using them, do they get really tacky? And I put my books together and I haven't had any issues with things um, sticking it together or doing anything like that. So, oh, that's good to know. Um, yeah. You can... Hmm. So I actually really like that page as is. I'm going to leave that and I'm just going to stick a little word stick. These are the Tim Holt stick quotes. Um, I like to pull them apart because I don't want anything too, too bulky in my journal um, and they just sit nice and flat. So it just depends on how you want to do your journal and whatever glue you like to use to, to glue it in. So. Oh, and don't do it down at the <laughs> So by using your Use It Up journal, you can do something really, really quick um, and get two finished pages fairly quickly. Uh, yeah. That, that one. Excellent. Anyone have any questions about that one? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Cool. I'll give you a minute to get Sounds your ca camera turned around. Oh, was there anything else you wanted to show us? Well, I was just going to say, because um, after last time with you, I bought some of your phone stamps. Ah, yes. I love. Um, and I had extra tape left on my page, so I actually stamped it in with white onto my page, and you can do a really cool gesso with this. So, not if you use that gesso. <laughs> I thought that was change so. Oh, you can do it. So if you stamp with gesso or if you um, paint marks with gesso, onto your page, you can actually get a really cool yes, I resist. So that'll be another page I can use someday. Later, you can do something with the background. So, yeah. If you haven't done that one before. <laughs> Excuse me. No, that's a good one. Okay, yeah. I'll give you a minute to turn your camera around. Oops, hang on. 
there we go we've got the right button so i think we learned so much from that i really enjoyed it i love the idea of having a use it up journal so you can feel free to just use up the bits and pieces that you've got to try a few things I liked how Neve's been experimenting in a journal that's long and skinny because giving ourselves different size layouts really does sort of stretch the imagination and helps us, um, you know, just really think of different compositions because otherwise we sort of get stuck in a bit of a rut. And I love her idea of practice mark making as well. So Neve, I love that you're talking about practice mark making. Um, what are some of the other things that you like to do? Um, make a mess. Make a mess? <laughs> yeah. I just, my use it up journal, I, as I said before, I don't actually swap, but I use my use it up journal. So I, um, the first day I got my spray, I just started spraying my journal and, you know, oh, look, they dripped down the page. Oh, they did this. Oh, they sit over the top of each other. And they were, they were pages that I didn't have any plans for. I went back and put some local images over. But I learned about the product by doing it. So the only way to know how to use a product is to actually use it. Yeah. And using it in a, a low, um, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> like the use up journal is, is a really important thing to do because we are so precious about our, our, our eyes, but they do go off. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like that, we are a little bit like that yellow paint I sell you, you know, I've obviously I use it regularly, but um. That one's been sitting around for a while, so it gets thicker and sluggier. That's some limited shelf life. That's sitting towards the end of its life. So it's really important that you actually get in and use the stuff. Yeah, there's nothing worse. I think it's the worst feeling when you've been saving something to use it for good, and then you go to use it and the paint's all dried up, and it's you've wait you've wasted it. <laughs> so you didn't waste it by using it, but you wasted it by not using it. So it's a good thing yeah. to remember. <laughs> Now, Mel yeah. was just asking, what did you have that were holding your paint bottles? You had a lovely little plastic holder there. Ah. Um, yeah, cut it down. So, I got this from Bev Cosgrass. It's an art, art bin, um, I think. Um, it cost, well, I know Bev had some on sale. This was $8.50, so mm -hmm. I think you see about $13 or $14. Um, it's for alcohol ink, so don't have to put it in there perfectly. But because I use my paint so regularly, um, and they get down to the bottom and hard to get out, I find it much easier having them upside down. I did have them in my rack bowl before, but that's a bit of an avalanche at the moment, <laughs> and they didn't actually fit. Um, they were also squeezed in. If I took one out, they'd all start to fall over. So I thought, well, I could maybe sacrifice some. <laughs> and, and do that instead. So yeah, because it's um, interesting that, the new that, Dilutions paints are actually labelled upside down. So if you were storing them tip down, the label's the correct way up. So Yeah, that, that's it. So I've always stored my dinner ones upside down, um, but they were just a bit of a tumbling mess. So this is kind of um, work that out. But you can, I don't know if you can see, I'll turn around again. Um, I've only had this about a week, and you see <laughs> that all the black is on it already? <laughs> And those are my paint pens. I don't know if you can see all this. Yes, we can see those. that splatter. That's very yeah. effective. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like I like to decorate my art. <laughs> uh, that tray looked like you'd had it for quite a few years. So I'm surprised to say that it's only a few weeks old. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. That I got that like that literally a week old. I got it last Saturday. <laughs> You've been doing a bit of art journaling. Now, did you want to share with us some of the samples for the classes coming yeah, up? Yeah, I can. So, tip you over again, sorry. Okay, that's okay. okay. And I'll go, you go there, and I'll go there. Yep. <laughs> so, this is the um, art journal cover that was uh, similar to what we're going to be doing. This is one of the dialogue covers. Um, this is a canvas, it's beautiful paint on. So, this is the type of thing that we're going to be doing. We should have time. I do like to work with me to do the front and the, the inside as well. Um, but if you don't have one of the dialogue covers, don't worry. You can still join in because you can actually paint the front of your um, journal cover. So that's the dialogue painted in the same style. Mm -hmm. Or um, you can paint some tissues. So you can collage it onto some of your bigger journals. Or you can paint some... 
stick a paper stick it on that. So, you know, you won't miss out if you don't have a journal cover cover on. We're going to have lots of options for you to, to, to play along. So that's the painting your art journal. That's the one that's going to be on the 26th, 27th sorry, of um, June. Mm -hmm. The one that will be coming up after that is how to make your own little 3D. Oh, wow. News dolls. So they're, again, pretty simple to do. But they're <laughs> so much fun. And um, when I first um, started teaching this class, I um, practiced with my mother. And she got addicted. So she made about 12 of them. And they're all sitting up into the window. <laughs> Oh, excellent. So, um, yeah, they're, they're lots of fun to make. They're great gifts to make. Um, and they're just a bit icy and crazy. And if you've got a studio, you can um, sort of pick them up and have something to inspire you and put a snarky quote. They're great for snarky quotes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can do a bit of passive aggressive too if you want to give them away to someone. <laughs> Excellent. And what we'll do is we'll get those links and we'll put them up on the Picture to Page website as well so everyone can find them and come yeah. and join in. That would be lovely. Excellent. I enjoy seeing all these lovely people creating alongside. Yes, and, and Denise, Denise's comment was that, yes, you've inspired her to be a courage to do more, so that's fantastic to hear. Good. <laughs> like we said, even if we've just inspired one person, and you definitely have inspired me today with all your bright colours. <laughs> Yes, bright colours, as I do say, it looks like a rainbow showing up on my page. That's okay. <laughs> we can deal with that. Yeah, exactly. And that's what those techniques do. It helps you give that bright background. But if you want a focal point, there are techniques you can use for, for knocking that back or bringing that image forward. That's it, you do. Yeah. So, and it is, it's just playing. Yeah, and I love what you said about the masks too. So, of course, if you don't have bought masks, just make your own, even if it's out of copy paper. They might last as long as a plastic template, but still, it still gives you something to play with. That's it, and particularly with bigger masks, because um, some of them are really odd shapes or abstract shapes, which is fine, but you might want something that actually looks a little bit more realistic. So fashion magazines are fantastic for that, and you can find people... Um, that maybe more replicate your own figure size mm -hmm. in some magazines. Yeah. <laughs> You're not fashion magazines for me, but <laughs> um, the other thing is, if you're feeling really brave, um, you may not want to put yourself into your journal, but you can certainly cut out a picture of yourself or a profile of yourself and use that as a mask. Oh, yeah. So you've got a representation of yourself, and mm -hmm. um, it doesn't actually have the picture in it. So I know again some people yeah. are a bit funny about putting their pictures in. Yeah. But I said that's the great thing about art journaling. It, it only has to have meaning for us, for absolutely no one else. I've had people say, well, what do you do with it? And it's like, you're missing the point. It's that we did it. It's that we showed up, that we were expressive, that we put colours together, that we turned our rational brains off for a bit and just created something. And if you can put yourself in but not make it so obvious, then that's another whole layer to your art journaling. That's it. Like, I um, had a beautiful comment on my YouTube channel yesterday saying to some, that someone said that they've, you know, always painted every page that they did. But now it's after the playing, it's like, oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. And that's weird. Excellent. You know, yeah, that's the only person who wants to love it. It's just you. It, it puts a smile on your face at the end of the session because you've had fun, you've relaxed and you've enjoyed what you've done. Well, that's all you need. Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, on that note, Neve, I think I'm going to have to go and do some art journaling this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us again today. You are very, very welcome and have fun, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We shall. Bye, Neve. Talk to you soon. Bye. Excellent. So I hoped everyone gained something, something from that. And like I said, I certainly picked up quite a few things. So like I said, Give yourselves permission to create a use it up journal or just a page in your art journals. You know, practice that mark making when you've got some downtime because it helps steady your hand. It helps show you what your brushes can do. And then of course experiment as well because paints react differently. We've talked about getting to know your paint. So which one are translucent? Which ones are more opaque? What sort of effects can we can get? And then by doing that though journaling and that that art making it just gets our hand in so whether we're using someone's stamps or whether we're doing it ourselves it still gives us that effect and you can see how Neve used that to sort of tie areas of her journal together use like that netting of marks to help give it a focus so I really enjoyed that and I hope you did too so the replay you can find over at from picture to page and beyond.com.au 
and we'll pop in all the links there to her online classes as well and of course to Neve's YouTube channel which you can find her on a very regular basis always there and full of inspiration so this is Michelle Brown signing off we hope you have a crafty day